Hi all, uh, this is the last panel discussion. I'm Dr. Jagdish, I was born in Bangalore, raised in traffic, and my career is in standstill. But I'm here now hosting this uh, lovely panel discussion with these eminent doctors over here with me. And um, I would like them to introduce themselves. So let us start uh, from this side. Uh, I have Dr. Dhamendra over here, whom you have seen him on TV a lot. But sir, a couple of words uh, of your introduction. Yeah, I'm Dr. Dharminda Singh, consultant psychiatry. I'm in physics, wala, also taking psychiatry. And I have done my post graduation from PGI-MER Chandigarh, then I worked in AMS Delhi. Then also I touched the CIP Ranchi as a faculty. So after having a three top institute experience of India, currently I am working as a senior consultant in Batra Hospital and Medical Research Center. So, so while you have the mic, just another quick question. What do you see as the trending topics or questions that are being asked in, uh, in these uh, you know, in exams, NEET, NEET uh, PG exams? Just very briefly, what's the trend in psychiatry? Yeah, initially, like, uh, psychiatry was ignored in society, and I think psychiatry was ignored in our tuition papers also. So initially, they were asking very superficially depression, schizophrenia, and other, like, superficial questions. But over the time, it has been seen that they started going into the depth. Like, they started touching. When we talk about psychiatry, we talk about, like, pharmacological and non-pharmacological, both interventions. So nowadays, apart from pharmacological, they started targeting the non-pharmacological also. So as a psychiatry faculty, what I have realized, because, you know, like psychiatry is a combination of like medicine is also there, uh, psychiatry apart from that pharmacology. So sometime when MCQs are coming, so medicine wala faculty will say, okay, this question is mine and, you know, pharmacology. Wala. But overall, if you'll see the psychiatry is, you take, it's a, it's a, still it's a minor subject, but okay. there are at least 9 to 11 questions are coming. And among these 9 to 11 questions, there are combination, but now they are more going into the non-pharmacological various psychotherapies, various acts, so many things are coming. So, but yeah, as a faculty, I'm saying, if as a minor subject, you take it the, in a short time. Otherwise, also in my classes, I always say that minor subject, you know, like there are two types of questions. One question, जो MCQ में लाइक like, पेपर में आते हैं और आपको भी आते हैं और दूसरे क्वेश्चंस होते हैं जो MCQ में आते हैं वो आपको नहीं आते सो सम टाइम स्टूडेंट्स से कि सर देयर द 30 क्वेश्चंस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट आई ऑलवेज आस्क वेदर यू नो दैट ऑल दैट्स अ इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग MCQ तो आते हैं बट आपको आते हैं कि नहीं आते सो लाइक अ माइनर एंड द बेसिक सब्जेक्ट इज अ बैकबोन ऑफ पीजी सो आई ऑलवेज एडवाइज एंड स्टिल आई विल एडवाइज इन फ्यूचर एज़ वेल इन फिजिक्स वाला दैट द माइनर सब्जेक्ट इज अ very important one because among like six minor subjects at least 50 to 60 questions are coming and if you'll take 50 to 60 questions you can understand where they can take you and where they can take you, you know? wonderful yeah. wonderful <laughs> so yeah Great students, so what I understood from this and what Sir is saying is that uh, even though there may be 9 to 11 questions in psychiatry, but I think the questions are going to play mind games on you. So moving on next, <laughs> uh, we have uh, Dr. Alekya here and Dr. Alekya is an orthopedician, sorry, orthopedician <laughs> <laughs> and um, she's also a Kuchipudi dancer. So uh, so doc, uh, give a quick introduction and what are the trending topics in orthopedics? Okay, so I'm Dr. Alekya. Uh, I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. I have not done my MBBS or MS in a top institutes like sir, but just giving you all hope that even from small institutes, you can make up and sit among the eminent faculty. <laughs> uh, so I've completed my PG from uh, Kamnini Institute of Medical Sciences from Hyderabad. And now I'm practicing uh, in uh, Vishakapatnam. I have been trained under advanced trauma fellowship and I'm, now I'm uh, doing in robotics, knee replacement in robotics. Uh, so the trending questions in orthopedics are mainly orthopedics is divided into five different things. So first is congenital or pediatric orthopedics and then it is infections and it is inflammatory and tumors. This is the trending like if you follow this particular pattern. So each question and now recently sports medicine also been added and they are always a question from sports medicine. So at least you will get around some seven to eight questions which you can answer easily if you are if you have given a small amount of time to it. So great. So these uh, questions can fix your marks. Um, so let's move to this side. What's my right? We have Dr. Vinish over here. Uh, Dr. Vinish is also a wonderful guitarist and uh, uh, students ke liye bajate hain. And uh, so give a quick introduction. What's the trend in anesthesia, uh, Dr. Vinish? Uh, my name is Dr. Vinish Rivastar. I'm a qualified chess physician also, apart from being anesthesiologist and also done by hospital administration. Presently, I'm the associate director and uh, head of the department administrative part of the anesthesia in one of the hospitals in Delhi. Apart from that, I've been teaching students for the last 12 years. Uh, I also play the guitar. A lot of people ask me, why did I pick up anesthesia? So, you know, the point is behosh karna or madhosh karna. 
ठीक है सो दो द थिंग्स आर टेकन केयर ऑफ एनी वेज कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन अबाउट बींग द ट्रेंड्स फ्रॉम एनएसिया सो रूटीनली वॉट पीपल से एन एस सीजा क्वेश्चन नॉर्मली पीपल वुड से फोर और फाइव क्वेश्चन आ दे बट वेरी रॉन्ग दे टर्न आउट टू बी टेन टू ट्वेल्व प्रॉब्लम इज द क्वेश्चन दे कम इंटरस्पर्स और इंटरमिंगल्ड विद अदर ब्रांचेस इट इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ब्रांचेज नो लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल दी मै हैव वन क्वेश्चन विद गैनेक वन क्वेश्चन दे विद मेडिसिन सो trauma not trial right say emergency medicine sort of thing casualty cpr so if i would like to tell students you need to be focusing on i mean a trend that i am seeing questions definitely are going to come from cpr questions are going to come from intubation questions are going to come regarding oxygen therapy and especially from the time that covid has come in definitely one of one of the questions are going to come this is apart from the pharmacological drugs which have been asked so if i will say around five questions to six questions come directly from anesthesia the remaining four would be with other branches for example if i'm talking about spinal so this will be interspersed with you know uh, something with anatomy as well the anatomy of the spine if i talk of intubation there will be questions which will be in regards with you know uh, the complete airway so therefore these are questions that come interspersed with anat with pharmac with medicine with gynac with surgery uh, in the end i'll just feel ki do not राइट करेक्ट सर सर तभी तो बोलते हैं एंजॉय भी तो कर रहा यू नो क्वेश्चंस बहुत आते हैं पे इज़ वन ऑफ़ द द ड्रग्स यू नो वील डिस्कस अबाउट इट इन क्लास ग्रेट ओके दैट्स वन थिंग दैट वील नीड टू डिस्कस एनी वेज आर हैंड ओवर द माइक टू अदर्स एज वेल so so they can introduce themselves also wonderful so i think what i understand is that uh, please don't ignore it and think just three four questions and these questions should not put you to sleep and uh, moving next uh, we have dr jazeer over here from dermatology so dr jazeer quick introduction what are the trends uh, in dermatology yes sir thank you so much i am dr jazeer abdul qadar and i'm very glad to be a part of this wonderful team and i'll be taking care of dermatology and uh, coming directly to the question uh, like what are the trends that is seen in dermatology in dermatology just like what all the other faculties have said we can divide dermatology into three like the basic dermatology and dermatology that comes with infections and also skin and systemic diseases and when it comes to the exams when we observe closely observe the pattern of the questions that has been asked so basic dermatology is always around four to five questions which comprises of uh, you know psoriasis vitiligo and all those main core diseases whereas once you learn other subjects like microbiology it gets integrated with uh, dermatology when it comes to infections and obviously skin and systemic diseases when other things also come together so it is more of uh, integrated questions that is coming these days so let us put it like uh, even for a short subject like derma if you just count on pure dermatology it may be around 4 to 5 questions but in an integrated fashion it comes to again approximately 10 questions for sure That's it. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Jazeer. Don't get stressed about dermatology. Otherwise, you'll get pimples and acne. You'll have to go to Dr. Jazeer. Uh, but now we have here with us Dr. Himanshu, who is from radiology. So, uh, Dr. Himanshu is also uh, before that Dr. Jazeer is also a cricket player, by the way. And uh, Dr. Himanshu is also a content creator on uh, YouTube. So, Dr. Himanshu uh, from radiology, what are the trending topics and a small introduction about yourself? Hi, sir. I'm Dr. Himanshu Gupta. I've done my MBBS and MD from Mulana Zat Medical College. sir during the mbbs i was a very weak student many people think that i have done my mbbs from mulana azad you must be a very bright student so when the when the first time i gave my neat pg exam i had a rank of 54000 wow so after one year of preparation my rank jumped to 62 so uh, even being in mmc sir i felt that there was lack of guidance within the students even being in mmc i did not have correct guidance how to prepare for this exam so this was very emotional for me this you know uh, felt very deep to me that you know even being in mmc i didn't have the correct guidance so after that i started my youtube channel to help the students to give them the correct way how to prepare for this exam and for the last 5 years i have been guiding students uh, through my youtube channel and various other telegram groups to help them get good ranks and motivate them so that they can perform better wonderful so you know from your experiences of uh, radiological film making uh, in the hospital to youtube film making outside and helping people so you're still remaining in film making there's a alternate career there but what are the trending topics doc sir uh, what is happening earlier in radiology you know one liner questions were asked they will they, they would ask you what is what uh, football sign is seen in uh, now what they are doing like what is the first imaging imaging modality for acute infarct so those questions they have just given the clinical presentations they will say that the patient is presenting with right sided hemiparesis what is the next investigation that you are going to do so basically all the uh, diagnosis they have they are giving the clinical presentations and they are asking you 
what is the imaging investigation of choice for those diagnoses. Wonderful. Great. So guys, I think overall the theme is that the no subject is to be ignored and uh, there is a lot of clinical relevance and there could be a lot of integrated questions that can be asked. So that's what clinics is, you know, patients don't come like a subject and a question. Everything is always integrated when you are in your clinical practice. And I think our training and education is moving towards that. Uh, we have some very curious students who asked some questions to our uh, panelists over here. And I'll uh, ask the first question to Dr. Dhamendra over here. Dr. Priya Rani from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College is asking, sir, how to score better in psychiatry? To know the psychiatry better, you know, like yes. in a better way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that, that's the only way to know the, you know, like score better in every subject, I think. But as I mentioned that psychiatry, basically, basic, the, when we talk about the, you know, this uh, minor subjects or the short subjects, always they are the ignored in MBBS, you know. When we start, when this, these subjects, we, we read that there are other subjects and we think if they are more important and Dr. Himanshu, you know, nicely pointed out, you know, ki this is uh, like, we don't have a correct guidance because there is a very like clear difference between a study and a smart study. I think that we, we also relied to our, when we have done and over that uh, years when we uh, taught the students that there, there is a difference. So in psychiatry also, like when we read in MBBS, it's a very superficial, but nowadays they st started asking in very depth. So uh, correct, like uh, one, the, the concept of the topic, then the, what's a, the drugs and then the non-pharmacological again and again i am repeating this word non-pharmacological because during the mbbs the student don't know they doesn't know that okay key, what's the non what what are the various psychotherapies and the, the lack of the guidance and the teaching also so if you like go in depth and if you see my videos in future then you will come to know how to score better in psychiatry wonderful wonderful um, and also scoring is very important in psychiatry because most of their scales have scoring systems so it's always uh, good to <laughs> um, <laughs> that. Uh, but great uh, thank you sir for that answer uh, the next question over here for dr alekia so there is a dr rithik from a, a primary health care center and sandhya is asking we tend to forget subjects like orthopedics easily what can we do for this problem well for starters uh, make sure that your orthopedics is fine and patients don't uh, disrupt it but yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you have to say about doc, uh, this doctor? Like, yeah, why, uh, people forget orthopedics easily? Yeah, they do because they don't read it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's most neglected subject, no? Okay. So if they read constantly from the first year of their, uh, I mean like the four, first day of the fourth year, and if they devote certain time for it to read and revise, then I think they can remember. And usually orthopedics is about one-liners that we'll provide them uh, during the preparation. And then if they keep revising it before the exam, before or two days before the exam, all the one-liners, then I think they can score better and remember it that way. Revision is the key. That's great. I mean, I'm happy because all orthopedics love me because they think I'm humorous. Uh, but uh, <laughs> all right, Dr. Vinish, uh, how important is anesthesia in terms of a good rank in NEET, PG and INICET in terms of that? Okay, this so question is asked by uh, Aravind S. from Apollo Main Hospital, not the side ones. The Apollo main, main, hospital. main. But hospital. Apollo Main is also in so many places, you know, which yeah, Apollo yeah, Main? Yeah. It's a main wala, you yeah. know. So, yeah. so give him the main answer, yeah. <laughs> not main. the side answer. <laughs> Right. So anyways, the question is, which is more important. So uh, once again, it will be about NEET, PG and INIC. Yeah. So so how important is anesthesia when it comes to yeah, good I, rank for the ranking perspective? I feel not just anesthesia. I'd say, in fact, all the short subjects and going back in time, like when I was preparing at my time. So there used to be something called, you know, a book which was dedicated completely to the short subjects, which was, you know, related to the four short subjects that I mean, people all sitting over here but that and big book on short subjects i remember that yes <laughs> <laughs> so it is that important from that time onwards that if you got to score a rank you are not supposed to neglect the short subjects like any of the short subject i'm talking of all of them on behalf of everyone i'll say it is the one which makes difference to the rankers right so major subjects everyone studies i'm not saying one does not have to study that you have to study that and give your time and effort to that but at the same time the short subjects cannot be neglected they have to be given ample time. I mean, less amount of time, but yes, you have to cover all of them to secure a good rank. And I'll say it's the same holds true for all of all the branches over here. Point well put across. Thank you, doctor. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Jazeer, there's a question over here. See, we know skin is the largest organ and there's a vast to cover it. But Imad Rahman from UCMS and uh, uh, GTBH is asking, how to study dermatology quickly covering all major topics for the largest organ in the body? Yes, regarding dermatology, as you must be knowing, we cannot learn dermatology without images. So what I believe is the eyes cannot see what the mind doesn't know. 
so what we are trying to do is we are trying to train your minds so that you start seeing things and the best way to learn dermatology is always by describing the skin lesions so for describing the lesions again there are a lot of terminologies and all but be it in your clinical practice or when it comes to your image based questions if you start describing the lesions the answer automatically comes to you i think that is the easiest um, advice that i can give you for learning dermatology and dermatology as all of you know it's uh, less of emergency so it's a cool subject so let us take it easy and with few practice and few revisions of those spot diagnosis the entire subjects becomes very easy wonderful so describe uh, the skin nicely of the subject <laughs> 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 yes, yes, absolutely. All right. And uh, for Dr. Imanshu, we have a question uh, over here uh, from Utkarsh uh, from Darbanga Medical College. So, how can we link radiology with all the other subjects? Sir, what we can do while we are reading any subject, we should keep our mobile with us, and we can Google all the things. Any any case that you are studying, try to Google that thing. Try to look at this that case from Radiopedia. Radiopedia is a very good site. Oh, Radiopedia. Okay. That was one of the reasons I took up radiology. You know, in our medical profession, you know, the problem is that you, the seniors are not going to teach you. But Radiopedia is one such site, you know, where you you will get a lot of cases. You know, I felt that this is one branch which I can learn on my own. So whatever uh, subject that you are st studying, whatever case that you are studying, just look up for the images. Uh, on the google and radiology will become very simple so what dr manchu is saying is that the way to link radiology is by clicking the link on uh, <laughs> radiopedia and you will get all your information uh, but now i have two open questions for all the panelists over here so now we all know what is coming next next is coming next and when next is coming next people are asking what next what to do next right so how is this you know next going to change the way we are going to study or prepare uh, for these exams so just open this to everyone over here Who's next? Yeah, in, <laughs> <laughs> in next, I think, uh, yeah, now, now we are talking about next, but I think uh, many students were already studying next is what, like about integration. So before also we used to do like uh, sometime our senior used to say, and we also realized that you start physiology, physiology ke baad mein, you know, do some micro and medicine. So it always is like, so it will be integrated and it will be like more fruitful and useful because see many students, they knew theoretically, but in clinical practice, we had uh, some difficulties. So I think it is, will impact in our exam also, as well as in future, you know, clinical practice as well. But it will, yeah, it will, we, we will have a better relationship also among faculties, you know, because it will be <laughs> yeah, integration, not only in a theoretical part, but in our relationship. As That's, well, yeah. I think, a very important <laughs> yeah. point, actually, yeah, yeah. because you, when a patient yeah. comes with a disease, it, you're it, going it's to It's about <laughs> unity. Next is Absolutely. about unity, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will... No, and this integration <laughs> and connection from theory to clinics is very important because patient is going to come with a disease and you can't ask for MCQs, right? And none of the above, all of the above, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you will have to get the clinical aspect aspect of it and you have to integrate with everyone for it so I think that's the idea but what does it take of other panelists on the things changing with next I would like to point one thing regarding next like a lot of apprehensions that students have and everyone has I'll say the concepts don't change right the chapters don't change the textbooks don't change all we are worried about is the fact that you know we are going to have more integrated questions but I think we're already dealing with them so in a way I'll rather put it this way if your concepts are clear the one-liners perhaps might get reduced so in that case the mugging part where you were trying to wrote learn is kind of going to go slightly out. Of course, it's going to be important. I'm not denying that. You have to run, remember. But at the same time, I feel that uh, concept building, where you try to understand a concept, becomes much more important than otherwise, which I think in a way is good also. Plus, clinical, uh, you become much more sound. That's what I feel. That's my take on it. Your students are now as a faculty also see like USMLE pattern. It's like yeah. a, you can say. Yeah. Yes, yes. So one liner I will as a faculty I I want to say ki it's a really dangerous. Either you know or you don't know. Yes. There is no guess. But in you know when you have a like a USMLE pattern, you see the 10, 11 lines. Almost they are just not writing the answer. Everything huh, they are they're giving clues. They're guess. giving. Uh, I'll put uh, one point, sir. There's one question from anesthesia which has been asked, and the question is, how much should be the required pressure we put? Options 10, 20, 30, 40. I mean, you don't expect, yes, you're supposed to do 30 Newton, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 10, you know, some students will start doing 10, 20, 30, 40. So I think, yes, some points are important. I'm not denying that. But having every question as a single line this way, where you're mugging it up, doesn't make sense. Maybe have something that's related to a patient has come to the casualty. You are dealing with a patient. Immediately you have to manage. I mean, this is an everyday scenario. 
So a patient has come, you are supposed to decide then and there itself what is to be done to the I mean to the patient over there. So maybe your clinical building skills have become much more better. Yeah, Handling so the patient becomes yeah, much more better. One liner examiners were playing with the words except. Yeah. This, you know, all this is yeah. Tell all the above yeah. and which except. is not x yeah. not all without yeah. below all, so all of the above none of the above. Think except and so better <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like thinking about the clinical yeah. skills rather than this except. You know. Wonderful. So I think the overall message over here that's coming is that uh, for people who understand the concepts well, I think not nothing much is going to change. But those who are relying on their memory power uh, have to start applying it. Uh, so now to our last question. So we are having the sprint, uh, you know, from from physics wala over here. So what is this sprint, and what can students expect uh, for their preparation for NEET PG uh, through this? Sir, the major problem while we are giving this NEET PG exam is that we have to remember all the 19 subjects on a single day. So it is not going to happen if we are just devoting, you know, 15 days for one subject. If the simple mantra to score well on the, on the, on that day is when you remember all the 19 subjects very well. And that will happen if you revise all the 19 subjects in the last seven days. So what I did during my NEED PG preparation, I revised all the 19 subjects in the last seven days before the exam. So in this sprint, what we are uh, trying to do, we are going to help you revise all the 19 subjects in the short period of time. So if, if I take up radiology, you know, in three, four hours, I'm going to give you, I'm going to cover all the systems, I'm going to cover all the important signs that you are going to read in radiology. Wonderful. So it's basically, it's at revision, but it is integrated. It's collated in the in a short period of time that will help you quickly revise and remember the most important things. Revision is the, you know, students, you know, keep on asking, sir, how to remember things, how to remember things. So I was reading one book and, you know, in that they have summarized it very well. Repetition is the only way to remember things. There is no other mantra. So uh, revision can be in the form of uh, uh, watching uh, short videos, it can be in the form of MCQs, it can be in the form of grand test. So you have to, you know, keep on revising and again and again to remember well on the day of the exam. Anybody else? Anything? What, what can students expect from the sprint exam? With just 30 days, hardly 30 days for the exam. So it is not the right time to go very vast into each and every subject. We hardly can devote a um, maximum of two subjects for the major and just hardly a day, a few hours for the minor subjects. So during uh, our minor subjects, the sprint which we'll be delivering about within three to four hours of dermatology, everything that is repeated or everything that should not be omitted, everything will be covered in such a way that it becomes easier for you so that you can go back and uh, devote more time on practicing the MCQs. And I think it should work. I mean, we should not try for big uh, magic, but some things done in a basic level, but in good quality should help you. I'd like to add here, same thing, as Sir said, in addition to all the, as what uh, they said, was that sprint, again, as everyone has said, the point is that we are running in a very short time. Yes, that is the time that we are having. And uh, we are just doing a very, very quick revision. The same thing holds true for NSCZ also. We are not going, we go to waste time over, you know, the big subjects, the big concepts, but yes, the points which are important, the points which have been asked regularly, and the ones that need to be emphasized upon are the ones that we're gonna revise. Wonderful. And uh, Dr. Alekia, anything you'd like to add? Print is all about, you know, making uh, easy for you. I mean, like at last, at the end, what is to be revised, what is to be recollected, what is to be reproduced is told in a basic way. So I hope it will help you all to get good marks and that extra edge from others to get into your favorite college or favorite subject. <laughs> Thank you. And Surf, some final words on Sprint from you. Sprint is Sprint, so we have to run, you know. We yeah. have to run. Yeah. Have to run. <laughs> and running. on that note, so this is the end of this wonderful engaging panel discussion. And uh, I'm sure that all this knowledge that you've gathered from our faculty here and all the faculties that you have spoke with are going to give you the right mindset uh, for the next set of exams. And tomorrow onwards, we are starting our Sprint. So I hope you're ready, you're energized, charged up. So on your mark, get set, go. Signing out, Dr. Jagdish Chaturvedi.